I'm mad that I can't smoke anymore. This sentiment was once expressed on the second day of a stop smoking clinic by a participant, well actually it was the third day because he had been off for two days, by a participant who was introducing himself to the group. We always had people go around the room and introduce and tell their story. And this was his story, he, you know, at this point in time, that he was really mad. He had not smoked for two days, but he was mad. And when someone says they're mad in the beginning, it, it could just be withdrawal. Although, the way he was expressing it, it, it sounded deeper than just a withdrawal reaction. But I asked the question I would have asked either way. I asked, you know, why are you quitting smoking? Because I'm usually trying to get to the bottom of what a person's feeling is. You know, there's a video about this. If you quit a lousy attitude, you're probably going to have a lousy time. So, you know, I, I was going to try to approach it from that level to see if that was going on. Did he have a bad attitude about this? So I asked him why he was quitting. He said, well, he's quitting because he, he's got peripheral vascular disease. He already has had a couple of toes amputated on one of his feet. He said he's very close to losing that leg. Gangrene was very close to setting in. And his other leg was already affected too. And he had said, at this point in time, he was in so much pain on the one leg that had the amputations of the toes already that he was almost looking forward to getting that leg taken off. He was in so much pain, you know, from that leg that maybe it would alleviate the pain. Then he said it wasn't just his legs that were affected, which is often the case. He also had problems with both of his hands and his arms. They were both affected. So he was quitting smoking because he had this terrible pain in, in his uh, legs from peripheral vascular disease. He was quitting smoking because of what was happening to his other legs. His, his arms was being affected, and he was really mad right now. But he says, but you want to know what really makes me mad? You know, my, my spouse and my children, they were, you know, really trying to get me to quit smoking and begging for a long time. They finally gave up. But they told me very recently, and this is why he was in the clinic now, and this is why he was mad when it came down to it. He said, they told me recently, they gave up trying to get him to quit. They said, you know what, you know, Dad, just keep on smoking. That, that's your business. You're fine. Just keep on smoking. But just know, once your arms are taken off, we're no longer going to buy your cigarettes, and no one is going to light your cigarettes. You could lie and cheat all you want now, but after that point, you're on your own, and you're not getting cigarettes. He said when this happened, he had to sign up right away. He, he joined the clinic right away, but he said he was mad. He has to quit smoking now, and I'm looking at him, and I said, okay, I, I just want to get this clear. Um, you're angry because you have to quit smoking. You know, you've got all these medical problems. When it really comes down to it, though, you're not angry right now that you're, you're about to have a leg amputated. You're, you're almost looking forward to that to stop the pain. You're not worried about getting the second leg amputated, even though it pretty much means there's a pretty good chance you're never walking again. You know, you're going to be wheelchair bound. You're not even mad. You're, you're not saying it right now that you're mad that you're going to lose your arms. In effect, your, your, your dignity is going to get affected. You're not going to be able to feed yourself. You're not going to be able to clean yourself. Nothing. Just, you're on your, you're totally dependent. That's not what's making you mad. What you're mad about right now is your children are telling you that when you have your arms taken off, they're no longer going to buy you cigarettes. And he said, yeah, can you believe this? Now the group is listening to this and they're stunned. Just absolutely stunned at what he is saying here. There's some in the group who are thinking, the man's nuts. You know, oh, oh man, if this was happening to me, I know I'd be stopping. Uh, you know, you don't know if this were happening to them that they would be stopping. They hadn't stopped up to this point. I mean, yeah, they joined this clinic and now they're off, but hey, how many years, how many decades had they been smoking, risking their life? You don't know. But then there was a part of that group who very likely realized they could have very well had been saying the same thing when they were a smoker and reacting the same way and feeling the same sentiments. And they were horrified, I think, by that realization too. And it was a good realization for them to have. It was interesting because the man does quit smoking. A couple of days later, he pretty much, you know, he'd been off four days now and he was, he was very grateful. He was no longer mad that he was not smoking. I think he was horrified by what he had said 
and how he was feeling. And he was anxious now as far as the fear of, you know, ever getting caught in the grip of this product again, realizing how far it had taken him, what it was doing to him. And again, that beyond just the fact that he already had, you know, toes amputated, but the mindset that it resulted in at this point in time. He actually said, and again, it was a couple days later, so four days into it, he actually started getting a, a thin layer of skin forming under a scab where he thought there was no way, you know, on, on the foot that was on the toes that were remaining, there was no way he was going to save this leg. And now it was possible. He was getting, you know, growth here of skin that he may, by have st having stopped, saved his leg. This was such an important thing for the people in that group to be able to witness though you know we have a couple of videos and articles where we talk about you know being stronger smarter this is where it shows when people who just think that they're going to make up their mind and they're going to be done with it this is it uh you know they're stronger than their cigarettes i want people to realize just what kind of grip cigarettes had on them when they were using this is why we make such a big deal about taking a puff on a cigarette because once a cigarette is in control, again, this is where this man was on that second day. Oh, yeah, he'd been off for 48 hours. He was in the midst of peak withdrawal. And it was making him say things and do things that were just totally unbelievable to everybody around them. Or, uh, but, again, it made perfect sense to him at the time. Two days later, it no longer made sense. And, again, what was the difference? He had no nicotine in him two days later. When you have a quit going and you're feeling very secure and you're feeling like there's no way you're going back, you hate smoking so much, you recognize how destructive it was, you realize all the implications, and you think there's no way, there's no way you could ever do that again. Understand, there's one way you can do it again, and that's letting nicotine get back into your system and, again, taking control of almost what is should be total common sense. But the addiction is calling the shots. You don't want to give nicotine a chance to call shots like that again because of where it could lead. If you have a quit going, do what you can to keep that quit going. If you haven't quit and you're just thinking about it now, listen to these kind of implications. Recognize the cost of what smoking can be and how far it can go. The more you realize it, the more you recognize just the grip that it has and how you don't want to ever be under a grip like that again, the more committed you will stay to make and stick to a commitment to never take another puff.